Half-Life Source? I don't remember playing this. Yeah, I'll try it out. What's the worst that can happen? Some backstory first of all. In 1998, Valve released Half-Life, considered one of the most influential games of the time, and for good reason. It had the best environmental storytelling of any game at the time, some absolute ball in music, and intricate level design. It was completely different from any FPS games at the time, and tried a lot of things that people thought were dumb. Now, Half-Life was made in the Gold Source engine, which is actually just the Quake engine, but they changed a whole load of stuff. And boom, Half-Life became a huge success, gathering a very small $8 million in two months. You know, just a little bit of cash. And of course, if a game becomes immensely popular, there's going to be demand for a sequel. And then most of the time, a third one. Most of the time, at least. Now for the sequel, Valve made the Source Engine, which was another engine that was quite ahead of its time. Realistic water? Amazing. Actual good lighting? Incredible. Ragdoll physics? I'm sold. But Half-Life 2 wasn't the first game to release on the Source Engine, and neither was Counter-Strike Source, which came before it. It was Half-Life Source. At least according to their Steam pages, I don't know, I might be completely wrong. A supposed remaster of the original game, but in a better engine. Now imagine for a second, being in 2004, and hearing that there's a remaster of Half-Life. What would you visualize? A game with some epic new graphics, smarter AI, and an experience that feels just like, if not better than the original? That we get a conclusive game of the year right here. Now, a remaster, by definition, is the same game with updated visuals and sounds. So, in Half-Life's case, it should be Half-Life in the Source engine, with higher quality textures and better sounds. In reality, Valve literally just drag and dropped Half-Life in the Source engine. They also hit it with a hammer a few times. And then I guess some monkey brain at Valve played it and thought, yep, everything's fine. Put the same price tag on it. So, um, that didn't go quite right. But you know what, I'll give Half-Life Source some credit, because it's not all bad, it did make some good improvements. But at the same time, it made three times as many unimprovements. I'll start with the good parts. The main menu now has live backgrounds, just like in Half-Life 2, which I think look a lot better. Unless you get the scene from Blast Pit, because the guard can't even be killed by the tentacle. So it's just a loop of this. The water looks like actual water, with real splashes and stuff. And there's ragdoll physics, perfect for those who want to pin guards and scientists to walls. The overall lighting is sometimes better, especially the flashlight, which works like an actual flashlight, instead of sometimes working like a flashlight. There's full 3D skyboxes now, instead of those 2D images, except for Zen. And when you first see the tentacle monster with the scene where it grabs the scientists, it actually looks like he's grabbing him, which in the original is a bit delayed, so he looks like he's just floating. And the best thing of all time, you're able to uninstall it. And that's pretty much it. Unless I miss something, that's the only good stuff in Half-Life Source. Now for the bad stuff. You might want to grab a drink for this, by the way. I'll start with the little things. This scientist just levitates above his chair. Clearly he's leagues above the other scientists. Some shadows also go through objects, which I don't even know how that happens. The lighting, while it is better in some cases, it also seems broken in others, like in this hallway. If you enable the HD models, the scientists break their neck. But I mean, who uses the HD models? This tank can't even turn. I think the grunts might need to get in your brain. And speaking of grunts, when you shoot their helmet, it's supposed to show the bulletproof decal, but now it shows blood, so you think you're dealing damage, but nope, the helmet still protects them. The barnacle's tongues don't even reach the ground, so you'll just get grabbed unexpectedly. When you fight the gun arc, the acid leaves behind a black decal, for some reason. A lot of your weapons, especially the crowbar, look so shiny that you'll just get flashbanged if even a minuscule amount of light touches it. And no matter what you're hitting with the crowbar, it always plays the sound of hitting metal. Immersion ruined. Now that was just the little stuff. Now onto the big stuff. This was only a one-time thing, hopefully. But the most important one is when I went to uninstall Half-Life Source, it also deleted Half-Life 2 with it. What? Some of the guns now feel different. When you shoot the MP5, there's this weird up and down movement 
for, I don't know why, I thought Gorn was a highly trained professional. I mean, he survived the second hazardous course after all. And besides the weird movement, it also deals a lot more damage. So you can wipe out the grunts quicker, but so can they. Which I guess in some way can be a balance for the up and down movement, but that just makes both changes unnecessary. Then at this part of the game, the grunt just completely ignores the scientists and goes running after you. Which may not seem like a big change, but remember when I said Half-Life was the king of environmental storytelling? Well, this is the one important scene that's supposed to tell you that grunts are bad because you see them kill a scientist, right? Yeah, well, not anymore. In the conveyor belts and residue processing, the whole map just decides to die. What the f- All the textures are literally the same. Not even upscaled or anything, just straight up ported, so they look a bit out of place in the Source engine, if you're used to Gold Source. And speaking of out of place, I know I said that the water looks actually good now, and it does, but I also think it looks out of place surrounded by comparatively low quality textures. And remember when I mentioned that broken background scene from the main menu? Yeah, well, that's still persisting game. The guard is just invincible, if he even has the brains to go out there. And it's not just him. You can't even die from it. At least, that specific one. You can still die from the others. And there's probably a million other broken things that I didn't mention. There's this website that lists a whole lot more. So if you want to play actual Half-Life, don't play this supposed remaster. <laughs> Unless you want to laugh from all the absurd stuff, then by all means go ahead. That's the only reason I'd play it, along with the physics. And this is where Black Mesa does a great job at actually remaking Half-Life in the Source Engine. Now, I haven't actually played Black Mesa yet, so I can't say I know it's perfect for a fact. But from what I see, it's compelling. But I should also say that Black Mesa is a fan-made remake, so it does have a hell of a lot of changes to things like the level layout and how the weapons work. But, this is more than a replication. but if you want the classical experience, just play the original. Plus, if you want to play any mods, there's like a total of... Five mods for Half-Life Source. So, final nail in the coffin. And that's why Half-Life Source is a bad remaster. Change my mind. Until then, bye.